In just a few days, Vladimir Putin has not just invaded Ukraine, he seemingly threatened nuclear war on anyone trying to stop him. President Putin has ordered Russia's strategic nuclear forces to be placed on high alert. Could Putin really start a nuclear war? Is Putin threatening nuclear force? When Vladimir Putin announced his invasion of Ukraine early on Thursday morning, he warned that nobody should get in his way or they would suffer grave consequences. And he didn't say what those were, but everyone understood that it was a reference to nuclear weapons. What he's done over the weekend is make that threat even more explicit by saying he's going to move his deterrence forces, which are the way that they describe their nuclear forces, onto higher readiness. And what that means is that the command and control system for Russian nuclear weapons in peacetime normally would not allow launch orders to go through. But now that it's on higher alert, those orders can go through. So the analogy I would use would be to say it's like disengaging the safety catch on a gun. Uh, it, It makes it easier to send orders through to those nuclear weapons. What does Putin hope to achieve with threats of nuclear escalation? What's important to say is that putting nuclear forces onto higher readiness isn't a preparation for using them. He's not about to launch missiles at the West. What the purpose is, is to say, don't get in my way as I do this invasion of Ukraine, because who knows where it'll end up? The risks are so high. He's he's manipulating the risk of this conflict to try and, and deter the West from getting involved. And of course, it is involved. It's been sending weapons, arms, anti-tank weapons, ammunition to Ukraine. And I think that one of Putin's objectives is to say, you're playing with fire. Stay out of my way or who knows where it could all end up. How has the West and NATO responded so far? NATO has said that Putin's escalation is irresponsible. The West has said that these are reckless actions. Uh, In fact, many experts have said that as well, because, of course, whenever you put nuclear forces onto higher readiness, that does carry the risk of uh, nuclear launches being easier, easier to achieve. Um, but, But what the West hasn't done, importantly, is respond in kind. It hasn't said it's putting its own nuclear forces onto higher alert. And indeed, it doesn't need to because America, Britain and France, the three nuclear armed powers in the NATO alliance, all have nuclear armed submarines that patrol the oceans around the world, hidden under the sea at all times. In other words, weapons that can't be found, weapons that can't be taken out. And so they're always ready and able to respond. And nobody has been putting their their land-based missiles or their bombers on high alert because I think they realise the important thing to do now is to keep these risks down and not follow Putin's lead. Are Putin's threats posturing or a real danger? Putin's threats are both posturing and they're a real danger. Uh, they're a real danger because, of course, um, nuclear weapons are serious things. They can, they're weapons that can cause the annihilation of the entire planet as we know it. And although the risk of, of, a, of an accidental or an or a, a unauthorised launch are very low indeed, um, with nuclear weapons, people tend to be extremely cautious. But I think they're also um, actions that show... Uh, perhaps a sense of weakness, a sense that he's afraid of Western intervention. His war in the first few days has not been as quick or as easy as he might have imagined. And I think he's very, very keen indeed to keep the West completely out of it. So his threats, his, his, his language, his rhetoric, all of it is intended to say, stay away, stay out of this, don't get in my way. And I think all of that conveys a whiff of fear, perhaps, a whiff of vulnerability. What does NATO need to do now? And how critical are the next few weeks? This is a very tense moment. It's probably the most tense moment in in European security for a generation because it's a huge land war right on the edge of NATO's territory. And, and, And I think everyone appreciates the risks are incredibly high. Both sides right now are feeling out how far the other side might be willing to go. The approach the West has taken so far is to say these threats are going to be taken seriously, but we're not going to back down. We're going to keep providing arms. We're going to keep applying heavy, heavy sanctions that are annihilating Russia's economy right now. And we're going to keep supporting the Ukrainians in their resistance against Russia. 
But I think there's also a recognition at the same time that people have to think about potential off-ramps. People have to think about potential diplomacy. For example, like the meeting between Ukrainian and Russian officials that took place on the border with Belarus in the last couple of days. Could Putin really start a nuclear war? I don't think there's any reason to think that Vladimir Putin wants to start a nuclear war or that he would be willing to do so given that his own country, his own regime, his own leadership, but his own people would be killed in a response because that's the reality of modern nuclear weapons. That what we have is a situation of what was called mutually assured destruction. If Vladimir Putin launches nuclear weapons at the West, NATO would launch nuclear weapons at Russia. And that relationship creates creates a degree of stability, a degree of predictability. What's important to remember is that the deliberate initiation of a nuclear war isn't the only scenario we ought to be concerned about. In a situation where you have a a huge conflict in Ukraine, lots of NATO activity and, and, and America and other countries reinforcing Eastern Europe with thousands of new troops, warships in the Black Sea in close proximity, accidents can happen. And those accidents could in theory spiral into armed conflict and armed conflict can result in exchanges of nuclear forces. That is profoundly unlikely and no one should exaggerate the likelihood of that. But it's because nuclear weapons are so destructive that nobody should take any chances and that the two sides need to exercise all of the lines of communication they have at their disposal and make sure that they do nothing to raise the temperature in a reckless way, which unfortunately is exactly what the Russian side is doing right now. Thank you for watching. For all our coverage on the war in Ukraine, please click on the link and don't forget to subscribe.